Don't forget, the teamwork. Teamwork is the sole role of working in labor room. The question which we asked ourselves, should we use electronic fetal monitoring? Do you agree in using electronic fetal monitoring or you have another opinion? Intrapartum fetal monitoring is essential for identifications of fetal hypoxia to reduce perinatal morbidity and mortality. Electronic fetal heart rate monitoring lead to reduction in the rate of the neonatal seizures and no significant difference were observed in Upgar score, admission to neonatal intensive care unit and perinatal death. Subjective and incorrect interpretation of cardiotocography data is a common finding in intrapartum event-related asphyxia. Risk factor mandating electronic fetal monitoring, we divide them to the maternal factor, labor factors, and fetal factors. In maternal factor, we have antenatal factors like hypertensive preeclampsia, diabetes, intrapartum hemorrhage, other maternal disease, cardiac disease, severe anemia, hyperthyroidism, vascular disease, renal disease, whereas intrapartum can be vaginal bleeding in labor, intrauterine, intrauterine infection, epidural analgesia. Labor factor, previous cesarean section, prolonged membrane rupture, induced labor, augmented labor, hypertonic uterus. And fetal factor, antenatal, like small fetus, growth restricted, constitutionally small, prematurity, oligohydramnias, abnormal umbilical artery doubler velocimetry, isomunization, multiple pregnancy, breech presentation, intrapartum factor like meconium stain of amniotic fluid, suspicious fetal heart rate or on auscultation, and post-term pregnancy. Good practice note. We have to know the speed of paper. Date, time, name, hospital number should be labeled on the CTG. Note any intrapartum event like fetal blood sampling, vaginal examination, epidural anesthesia. Document review CTG every 15 to 30 minutes. Fetal heart rate tracing should be stored securely with the woman's medical record at the end of the monitoring process. When a CTG is performed, there must be documentation of all features in the patient record. CTG developed to support the documentation, so all the feature must be documented 30 minutes in the first stage of labor and every 15 minutes in the second stage of labor. For suspicious CTG and complicated patient, CTG should be reviewed at least every 15 minutes. CTG is a method for assessing the fetal central nervous system, which is highly sensitive to oxygen, which is critical in interpretation and clinical management. Some organization developed sticker of CTG. So like this sticker developed by Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Obstetric Gynecology, all what you have to do is to Put the CTG sticker and click on the baseline and the variability, deceleration, acceleration. You label the contraction as there is irregular, regular, mild, moderate or strong. And in the lower part of the sticker you can see if there is a normal antenatal, all the features are present. This is a reminder for the midwife and for the doctor who is following the patient in labor room and differentiating from non-reassuring and abnormal CTG and normal CTG. And there should be a signature and name for the person who review the CTG. This is, um, I think it's something like ideal CTG follow-up. If you don't have such a sticker, at least you stick yourself to this uh, diagram or to this uh, 
protocol to follow up this sequently when you are writing in your notes the CTG interpretation. What is your opinion about admission CTG? A NICE guideline in September 2007 stated that the aim to identify the fetus at increased risk of intrapartum hypoxia Number of cohort study and case study have suggested that admission CTG improve predictions to neonatal acidemia, term neonatal encephalopathy, and long-term neurological impairment and death. In this workshop, we are going to classify the antenatal CTG into normal antenatal CTG, non-reassuring CTG, and abnormal omnia CTG. So what is the normal antenatal CTG? Normal antenatal CTG is associated with low probability of fetal compromise and has the following feature. Baseline fetal heart rate is between 110 and 160 beat per minute. Variability of fetal heart rate is between 5 and 25 beat per minute. Deceleration are absent or early. Acceleration is 2 within 20 minutes and don't consider the absence of acceleration of intrapartum interpretation as abnormal. By the interpretation of the CTG, the first thing to look for is the date, time, name, hospital number. The speed of the paper should be identified. Number of contraction per 10 minutes. It shouldn't exceed 4 contraction per 10 minutes. The baseline of the fetal heart. In this CTG, the baseline is 130 beat per minute. The normal baseline is supposed to be between 110 and 160 beat per minute. Variability. By looking to the variability, there is two components of variability. The long-term variability and short-term variability. What we are talking about nowadays is the long-term variability which is 5 to 15 beat per minute, 3 cycle per minute for 5 second duration. Whereas the short term variability is 2 to 4 heartbeat per 1 to 2 second. In our eyes, we are looking for the long term variability. The short term variability is important in certain circumstances will be explained when we are proceeding in this workshop. Another parameter which we are looking for when we are interpreting the CTG is acceleration. Acceleration is increasing of the fetal heart rate by 15 beat per minute for 15 second duration. Reactive CTG should have two acceleration within 20 minutes. Remember, don't consider the absence of acceleration in intrapartum interpretation as abnormal. A reactive CTG or normal CTG or category 1 CTG, there should be no deceleration or early deceleration. What is the definition of deceleration? It's reduced of the fetal heart rate by 15 beat per minute for 15 second duration. So what is the feature of non-reassuring CTG? Non-reassuring CTG are unlikely to be associated with significant fetal compromise. The baseline fetal heart rate between 100 and 109 beat per minute or between 161 and 170 beat per minute. Reduce variability 3 to 5 beat per minute for 40 to 90 minutes. Typical variable deceleration without complicating feature with over 50% of contraction occurring for over 90 minutes. Single prolonged deceleration for up to 3 minute deceleration. And don't consider the absence of acceleration in intrapartum interpretation as abnormal. An abnormal omnia CTG Abnormal CTG associated with significant fetal compromise and require further action. 
Two of the features described in non-reassuring CTG traits are present, or baseline fetal heart rate is less than 100 beat per minute, or more than 180 beat per minute. Variability is absent, 5 to 3 beat per minute for more than 90 minutes. Variability is sinusoidal for more than 10 minutes. Deceleration are prolonged for more than 3 minutes. They resistant late deceleration, especially with, de with decreased variability. And have complicated atypical variable deceleration with over 50% of contraction with loss of variability, tachycardia, or late return to the baseline, both for over 30 minutes. How we resuscitate the fetus? When we identify abnormal CTG or non-reassuring CTG, we have to resuscitate the fetus. We can resuscitate the fetus by having the mother lie on her left lateral side, reduce or stop the symptom, especially if there is hypertonic contraction, initiate the colysis, either with Sintu or without Sintu, increase IV fluids, apply internal monitoring to verify the accuracy of external monitoring reading, and fetal blood sampling. When there is a clear evidence of acute fetal compromise, for example, prolonged deceleration greater than 3 minutes, Fetal blood sampling shouldn't be undertaken and urgent preparations to expedite birth should be made. If the heart rate is not restored to normal within 30 minutes, prompt delivery is needed. Caesarean section may be the be become necessary. This is schedule explaining the feature of reassuring, non-reassuring, abnormal CTG. It is summary for what we explained previously. So you keep this while we are going through the CTG workshop. So when we are talking about reassuring fetal feature, we are talking about 110 to 160 bit per minute baseline. We are talking about more than 5 bit per minute variability. And we are talking there is no deceleration. Maybe or maybe not there is acceleration. When in every reassuring CTG, fetal heart rate baseline between 100 and 109 or 161 to 180, variability less than 5 for 40 to 90 minutes. There is typical variable deceleration with over 50% of the contraction occurring for over 90 minutes, single prolonged deceleration for up to 3 minutes, and deceleration durations less than 60 seconds and loss of less than more than 60 beat. Absence of acceleration with otherwise normal trace is of un, uh, significant. It's not significant. Abnormal, when there is a baseline less than 100 or more than 180 sinusoidal pattern for more than 10 minutes, or variability less than 5 for more than 90 minutes, or there is either atypical variable deceleration with over 50% of contraction or late deceleration both for over 30 minutes, single prolonged deceleration for more than 3 minutes. So while we are proceeding in the workshop, please keep this paper with you uh, which you will follow when you are reading the CTG. Definition of normal, suspicious and pathological fetal heart rate tracing. Normal, all the four features are reassuring. Suspicious, one feature not reassuring, and the remaining feature are reassuring. And pathological or omnias, fetal heart rate trace, two of non reassuring or one of abnormal. Here is further information about classifying fetal heart rate tracing is given below. If repeated acceleration are present with reduced variability, the fetal heart rate tracing should be regarded as reassuring. Acceleration, remember, from the pathophysiology, it's coming from the fetal movement. So, while we are proceeding for acute and chronic hypoxia, you will understand what we mean. The presence of fetal movement and the presence of acceleration is reassuring sign. 
through early uniform deceleration are rare and benign, and therefore they are not significant. Most deceleration in labor are variable. The pseudosinusoidal fetal heart rate pattern this pattern shows less regularity in the shape and amplitude of variability, wave, and the presence of beat-to-beat -beat variability. So it is pseudosinusoidal because it looks like sinusoidal, but the short-term variability is still intact. We will explain further when we are going for sinusoidal pattern, we are talking about the chronic hypoxia and anemia in pregnancy, the fetal anemia, we will talk about the sinusoidal pattern and you could appreciate and differentiating between the two. By looking to this CTG fetal heart rate tracing, you may think that this is sinusoidal pattern. But look deeply and look for short-term variability, you will find that short-term variability is intact. Cherish your dream as they are the children of your soul and the blueprint of your ultimate achievement. This is Napoleon Hill.